So a common question that I get asked a lot is, hey Talon, if you could only have one knife for the rest of forever, what would you pick as your one go-to knife? And when you have options like this, I have uh, quite a hard time picking just one knife. So for the past 30 days, I decided I was going to carry this knife, a fixed blade. Now I'm going to share my experiences with you guys. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. I have a pretty interesting video for you guys today because this is something that has been on the back of my mind for a while. I always kind of liked the idea of carrying a fixed blade full time as like your only go-to knife. Now, if you're new here on the channel and you don't know me that well, you probably don't know that I am fairly obsessed with pocket knives. Not even just pocket knives though, it's like EDC items and tools and things that you use and carry every single day to make your life a little bit easier. I'm into wallets and belts, of course pocket knives and like little tools that you can carry with you and EDC pouches to fix things and just to help make your life a little bit easier. So with that being said, as you guys can imagine, I have quite a few options to pick from when it comes to pocket knives. And I've actually thinned out this collection. I could probably do an update on that one, but if you wanna check out what's in that box. A video that is most up to date would be this one right up here. So if you wanna check that out, you can click that now or after the video. So I decided I wanted to try this carry nothing but a fixed blade. Use only a fixed blade for 30 days. Now there's some people out there who are in the same boat as me and they're like, hmm, I'm kinda curious about that. I wonder if I would be able to do that. Other people might already do that and they're like, what's the big deal? You have a fixed blade on your side all day. I do that every single day. And then there's other people who are like, why do you carry a knife? And to those people, I'm just gonna ask you, why are you even watching this video in the first place? So right now, current day, I've already carried a fixed blade for probably a little bit over a month, actually, now that I think about it. Now this all started a few vlogs back when I had a friend of mine make me one of these right here. So this is a very simple taco style Kydex sheath. We got some buttons on there to loop this thing around your belt. And of course, we had this thing molded for a Travax Trek field knife. And this one happens to be the prototype. I've done a full dedicated video on the prototype version, this knife right here. So if you wanna check that out, I'll also leave a link for that right up here in the corner. So if you know me, you know that I love Travax products and this is the first version of that knife. I thought that this would be a good solution for carrying this knife because it fits in here nicely. It kind of stays nice and tidy along your belt line. And then if I compare this to the prototype sheath that it came with, not a big fan of brown. If I have something on my side, I want it to be black to kind of match the rest of my clothing. I'm always wearing black jeans. The sheath was a nice inclusion for this knife, but once I got this thing, that's sort of what sent me down this path. So I started carrying this prototype knife for about a week, maybe a week and a half. And then at the end of that one week, I came home, I was checking the mail, and that's when I found a package from Travax of their production version of this knife. Now when I opened this thing, as you guys could imagine, I was super excited because of the new revision of this black sheath. So this is a right-handed black sheath with some really nice Travax top grain leather. This is a combo sheath, so on the back here you can slip your belt through to carry this thing vertically or horizontally, however you see fit. And then one of the coolest new designs on this thing is this tiny little piece of leather right here. What's great about this is as you go to pull the knife from the sheath, you simply pop this with your thumb, and then that extra tension of the leather pulls this flap out of the way. That way you can pull the new blade out of its sheath without cutting that thing off. Now moving on to the new blade, here you can see the design is refined just ever so slightly compared to the prototype. I do have the S35VN version in front of you right here and there are quite a few very minor details that they did change on here and I will save all of that stuff for the end of this video. So once I pulled this thing out of the package, I was like, hell yeah, this is the one. I'm going to continue what I'm doing right now and keep carrying a fixed blade as my primary only knife for 30 days. I decided I was also going to film every time I pulled this knife out to use it and that ended up being much harder than I thought it was going to be because I need to hold my phone and hold whatever I'm cutting and have the knife out. So the videos weren't the best, but I will be rolling some of those in through here. So now let's flash back about 30 days ago to when I first started making this video. And it all started with putting a really nice edge on this blade. 
The first thing I'm going to do right now is put an edge on the one that I'm going to be carrying right here. I have the prototype in my Wicked Edge Sharpener. I'm going to see what angle I want to sharpen this at. And basically I'm going to be using the prototype version of this knife to practice sharpening it. I don't want to ruin the new blade. I have a bunch of different grits in here from 100 all the way up to glass with some diamond lapping film on there. A lot of people ask me what I use to sharpen my knives and this is what I use. Very expensive, I'm not the best at using it, which is why I am going to practice. And since I'm not the greatest at it, that is also why I have not brought you guys a video on it. Now I've already started by marking up the edge of this blade here. I'm gonna put some work in on the prototype version and then eventually get around to the production. All right, I think this is as close as I'm going to get to a mirror polish on the prototype version. This is very hard to see on camera, I'm aware of that. Uh, but I'm okay with that for now. I think I'll move on to the real one. Now my only concern with this is that I don't want to get rid of the belly. You'll notice that the belly in this version is a little more pronounced than this one because I basically like reprofiled the entire blade. I have this thing set to a 20 degree angle on each side. So uh, it really comes down to the position of the knife as it's in this rig. And basically I want to be very careful while I'm doing this because I don't wanna mess up my nice new blade. This one's gonna be a little bit harder to sharpen because it is S35VN, whereas this one is 440C. So yeah, wish me luck. All right, now, I don't mean to uh, toot my own horn, but I'm pretty sure you guys can see that edge on there. I'm glad I practiced before just diving right in because this one turned out way better than the other. It's also a better steel, so. Now we'll do a hair test. My hair is blonde, so it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> yeah, that is hair popping sharp. So now we're back into present day and I wanna give you guys my final thoughts. What did I actually think about carrying this thing for a full 30 days or more? The one thing that I will say is that I do love this new sheath design. Not only because it's black, but also because of the little bit of leather up here like I mentioned. I'll actually throw this thing on my belt right now so I can show you guys how I decided to carry it for a majority of the time. I am wearing a Trevac cinch belt and this thing is cut perfectly for this. I simply slip it on my right hand side there. And I guess one of the first cons of this experiment is that I had to do this every time I put the knife on or took it off. So here's how the knife rode on my side. It's coming to just a little bit below my front pocket line here and it sits in between my front and back pocket. What's cool about this is that I can very easily cover it up with a t-shirt and it goes fairly unnoticed. Since it is a little bit colder right now, I would typically throw my t-shirt in between my skin like that and then throw my hoodie over top of it so it goes basically unnoticed. Now getting the knife out was pretty easy to get used to. Simply pop that right like that, use the knife however you see fit, and then of course I had to get used to actually looking 
while putting this blade away, make sure I'm not cutting anything, myself, my clothing, or anything that might be in the way. Now initially, I was carrying this prototype knife in this sheath here, right up front. I would slip these snaps around right like that and it would sort of ride right in the front. It doesn't protrude all that much because the belt buckle is nice and slim, which is why I like this belt in the first place. And it was okay like this until you throw in anything else that might be around this area. Now, as you guys know, I rock a holster right up front. So when you add that to the mix, the knife is going to sort of poke out like that. And immediately I realized that this was not the best option for me. That's why I switched to carrying this thing on my right side and it rode here for a majority of this month. Now I didn't actually end this test by carrying the knife in this way that you see here. I actually moved on to something different, which I will show you here in a second. But one more thing that I would like to add about this sheath is that this is the part that really makes this a Trayvax product. The materials that they use are top notch. It's the best stuff that you can find out there. It's all handmade and you can just tell that it is very high quality, which basically every single Trayvax product is. This knife by itself is great. It's a cool knife, but with this sheath, that is really what makes it a Trayvax product. So speaking of just this knife now, let's actually talk about what has changed between the prototype and the final production version. The one thing that you'll notice right up front is that the final production version on this side right here, the finish of it is ever so slightly different. The prototype version was sort of like bead or sandblasted, and this one is just a little bit more refined. The dimensions and everything are the same. The jimping on the spine of the blade is the same, but the one thing that was also different was these scallops in the blade right here. These things are obviously machined out of pieces of steel. So this entire thing is S35VN. And what really got me excited about this blade is that on the prototype here, you can see how they left the CNC machine marks in there. You can actually hear them if I run my nail over them. So you can see where the machine has passed on this blade. Now on the final version, they actually widened these up a little bit and I found that this actually made it really great for cutting things like food. Food prep with this knife was awesome because of those little scallops in there. Stuff tends to not stick to it as easily. If you think about a completely flat ground blade, almost like a piece of glass, something that is very flat and smooth. If you're cutting something like meat or cheese, it's obviously going to stick to that. But with these little sort of serrations in here, I should mention that they're not serrations. This is a completely plain edge blade, but with those little scallops in there, it kept food from sticking to it. So that was kind of cool, probably not intended, but that's the way this thing functions. So again, back to carrying this thing, when I did have it in this sheath, I probably carried it like this for roughly three weeks. The leather has worn great. I actually got used to putting it on and taking it off. Typically I would wake up, put it on when I put my pants on, and then before I would go to sleep, that is when I would take it off. Now, when you have something like this on your side all day long, for someone like me, I wasn't doing anything this past month that really required me to have a fixed blade. I didn't do any camping or I wasn't starting fires or anything like that. So when I had this thing on my side, it did tend to get in my way more than it really helped me out in any situation. Now, is a fixed blade gonna cut anything better than say a folding knife like this? For what I was doing, opening boxes and letters and just like cutting random things here and there in my everyday life, I really don't have a need to carry a fixed blade. A folding knife like this is going to do just fine. However, there's something about using a fixed blade that just feels better. Just knowing that this is a full tang blade, it's all one solid piece of really high quality steel, it's just kind of nice. It's like a throwing knife. I could throw it into something if I wanted to and it's not going to break. I could baton this through a piece of wood if I was out camping. And I know that I really would not want to do that with some of the other folding options that I have because you're gonna risk breaking a lock. So like I said, I didn't really have a need for a fixed blade, but it just feels good carrying a nice metal fixed blade like this. Now, when this thing started getting in my way, what it would do is sort of like poke in my side if I'm just kind of like laying on the couch or sometimes if I'm driving in my car and I'm reaching across to grab something, this thing would sort of poke me in the ribs a little bit. And when something gets in your way that was not normally getting in the way before, a pocket knife like this is just up front in my pocket and it basically never got in my way, ever. This on the other hand does and that minor inconvenience sort of got to me after a while. And I decided that 
I wanted to switch things up a little bit. So that is when I decided to take it out of the leather sheath and put it again into a custom made Kydex sheath that a friend made for me. I'll preface this real quick just by saying, no, you can't buy these, so don't even ask me where I got it. They're not for sale. But this is something that would be pretty damn easy to make yourself. So again, it's just a taco style Kydex sheath. The Trayvax Trek fits in there beautifully, a little bit of a click retention on there. But instead of the belt loops this time, I decided to go with one of these clips. I ordered this clip online. You can get them on Amazon or directly through the manufacturer who makes these things. And what it is, is basically a solution to keep this thing in place no matter where you clip it. Now to some of you, this may seem weird and uncomfortable, but this is actually how I ended up carrying this thing for the rest of the month. In my back pocket right here, I don't have anything except sometimes I'll let my keys dangle in there. So what I did was I took the knife in its sheath, slipped that clip on my pocket, and that thing is in there, not going anywhere. Just like carrying it right here on my side, I can simply cover it up with a hoodie or a t-shirt, however I see fit. And now it's keeping the top part of this handle right in line with my belt line. So it's a little bit lower and it's not going to be getting in my way. It's not gonna be jabbing me in the side or anything like that. I can still get to it very easily, pull that thing out. Again, I sort of have to look back here to make sure I'm not just slipping it into my pocket and it's actually going back into the sheath. And I know what you're thinking, isn't that weird sitting down with a fixed blade in your back pocket? And honestly, it's not, it kind of goes unnoticed. It's far enough over on the outside of my back pocket here that it sort of like sits off to the side. I'm not actually sitting right on it. And so far, this has been the best way I've found to carry a fixed blade to balance the ease of access. It's very easy to get to. I can still get to it while I'm sitting down. And it also gives you that comfort level of sort of staying out of the way. It's not poking me or anything like that. The only downside, and this is probably one of the reasons why I'm switching back to a folder, that would be you actually have to look and see what you're doing when you're putting this knife away, making sure you're not stabbing yourself or cutting anything that you're not trying to cut. Now, if you pick any other knife out of here, here's one randomly, knife is out, knife is away, I can slip it back in my pocket with my eyes closed. I know how to use this knife. Now, again, I can get to my fixed blade without looking at it. It's very fast to get there. But now putting it away, I sort of have to like feel there. Okay, it wasn't that long, but just that minor inconvenience of like holding the blade and trying to index it back into the sheath. So that's just really not for me. All of these tools and the things that we are using every day should make your life easier, not harder. So for me personally, a folding knife fits into my life a lot easier. Now with all of that being said, let's get into the final talking point, which would just be how has the knife been as a knife? Not just talking about carrying it, but cutting and edge retention and everything like that. As you guys saw in the beginning there, when I put an edge on this thing, it was razor sharp. And so far, the edge retention has been great. I actually have not tried a shaving test with this over the past 30 days. Let's see if I can pop some hairs on my hand here. There's a couple little hairs coming off there. It's not quite as razor sharp as it was, but I was cutting down a lot of cardboard and things like that. Now, like I mentioned, I am going to go back to carrying a folder just because it fits my life a lot easier. However, I still see a very good purpose for this knife and that would be sort of like a backpacking knife or a knife that I keep in my van for food prep. I love that this knife is skeletonized so I could wrap this with paracord if I wanted to. If I use it for food prep, which is exactly where this thing is going to be for me, I'm gonna basically keep it in like my kitchen drawer. It's not gonna rust as long as you take care of it and food is not gonna get stuck in any type of like textured handles or anything like that. It's super bare bones, nice and slim. It's balanced very well. Right in this front finger choil here is about the balance point for this knife. I'm just a really big fan of this design and what I would really like to see in the future would be a knife like this with a lock on here. You can press it and fold it. Don't get your hopes up. I don't know if that is even in Trayvax's line of sight. I don't know if they would even want to make something like that, but a folding Trek knife would be awesome. Now I know I kind of bounce all over the place with this video, so if you guys have any questions for me, something that I may have missed, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to give you a response. If you're interested in checking out one of these knives for yourself, they have a 440C version, also the S35VN version. I'll leave a link to where you can pick those up as well as a discount code in the description down below. And I think that's all that I have for today. Now what's on my mind is what knife am I going to carry next? 
So I actually have one in mind. I have one open slot here in my knife case before I have to start making room. I'm basically limiting myself to just this amount of knives for the future. So if you wanna see what I'm going to put in this slot right here, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I think I have another knife review video coming out for you guys fairly soon. Now that is all that I have for today. If you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. That's all for today, so thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.